UFC 255 main event. The champ, Davison Figueredo, putting his strap on the line against Alex Perez. This one for the men's flyweight division. Figueredo, 19-1 in his professional career, won the flyweight belt back in July, and this one did not take long. First round, Perez holding on to the leg of Figueredo. Figueredo rolls for the leg lock, couldn't finish it there, but moments later he would. Figueredo dominant once on the ground, transitioned to a guillotine choke. Perez did his best to fight out of it, but there was no escape. Devison Figueredo retaining his flyweight belt via first round submission. It's his sixth finish, which ties the great Demetrius Johnson for most in UFC flyweight history. Figueredo retaining the belt in under two minutes. He was minus 280 on the money line. There were some bets coming in on the contender here. There was some value, but if you had Fig Figueredo via the submission, you got him at plus 350, and if you played it under the one and a half, plus money as well. The co-main event, also a flyweight title bout, but on the women's side, Valentina Shevchenko taking on Jennifer Maya. Shevchenko making her fourth title defense of this flyweight title. Huge favorite at minus 1,600. Got even deeper than that, but uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt was what waited for her in the form of Maya. Maya's won three of her last four fights, and her form showed early in this one. Shevchenko did take this thing to the ground and control it in the first round, but in round two, Maya would strike here. Gets Shevchenko against the cage and... Uh, going to work from there. This fight actually in the middle of the octagon for quite a bit of time. And then in the third round, Shevchenko lands the left hand, swings Maya to the ground, a display of power right there. And then in round five, Shevchenko putting some style points to it. Lands a hard body kick, followed by a spinning back kick to the body. Valentina Shevchenko pushed in this one a bit but fairly dominant, dominant in a unanimous decision. It is her fourth successful title defense, her sixth victory in a row, and her 20th win as a professional. Valentina Shevchenko wins via unanimous decision. She was minus money at minus 1,600 if you had her via decision with plus 190. Fight to go the distance uh, gave you a little value at plus 165. Let's welcome in our guys, Sugar Rashad, Evans, and Brian Campbell to break down what we saw on Saturday night at UFC 255. Gentlemen, let's begin with the main event here, Davison Figueredo and Alex Perez for the flyweight title. There were a couple of clashes before this thing did go final, but uh, it, it was a bit more conclusion than it was uh, expected to be here. What did you make of the means by which Devison Figueredo got this done, BC. He made quick work and really seemed in control of this fight for as short as it did last. Yeah, he is a bad dude and a danger to anyone in this division. And I think this is something that is important for the flyweight division as a whole right now. After Demetrius Johnson's reign came to an end, we didn't know if this division was going to continue being employed by the UFC. Of course, Henry Cejudo had a short run on top as a celebrity fighter before vacating his title. But Davison Figueredo was showing you a guy who might be able to create his own era at 125 pounds. He can finish you on on the feet with strikes he can do it on the ground just as d easily and savagely as he did on this night when it looked like Alex Perez who was a worthy contender despite coming in as a late minute replacement for Cody Garbrandt uh, he had some moments early but you saw how calm Figueredo was you saw the swagger by the way and you saw a guy that as long as he can continue winning the battle on the scales He's going to be a favorite in each of these title fights he steps into because he has a finishing ability and a confidence to go with it that is very dangerous right now. Yeah, one thing about the 125 weight class that kind of was the downfall of it when Demetrius Johnson was there is the fact that it just wasn't exciting enough, meaning the fact that no one was fearing somebody getting knocked out and they just didn't have the respect for the power in the 125 weight class. That changes with Devison Figueredo. I mean, just watching him throw kicks, just watching him throw his strikes, he hits with so much bad intentions, and they and they and they thump when they hit. So you know he's hitting with some kind of consequence. But I mean, the way that he just transitioned in his movement and really not getting caught up with anything. I mean, Perez was able to give him all that he could handle. I was really impressed with the way that Perez came and really brought a lot of mixed action at first. 
and really good kicks out the gate. But just the, 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 the sturdiness and just the mindset of Devinson Figueredo, Figueredo was one way he was able to just figure things out, settle things down, and then find that submission when the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, no doubt, gentlemen, sharp in his strikes and in his submission was Figueredo. And it begs the question, BC, you talked about the swagger of Figueredo. He did appear on your podcast earlier in the week, shirtless. I think there were some sunglasses uh, pre-interview, but um, this is a guy who now has the world on a string. You talked about the Garbrandt fight that didn't happen. What's next for Figueredo as he kind of makes any fight that he wants here as the champion uh, and defending this title once again? Well, first of all, shout out to uh, the great 50 Cent, who is who Figueredo points to as the as the founder of the swagger that he now employs. However, that math connects. But look, uh, he's going to have tough fights ahead of him. There's no doubt about that. And Brandon Moreno on the undercard on this same evening looked fantastic in stopping Brandon Royval, another up-and-comer in the moment. It ended up happening by shoulder injury. But Brandon Moreno is your most qualified next contender in this division. Figueredo called out his name afterwards. It would be another tough fight. It would be all action. But like I mentioned earlier, it's one in which you better believe you would favor Figueredo coming in. Yes, Cody Garbrandt, the former Bantamweight, King is very much in this title discussion. He's a celebrity fighter with a big name, but I need to see that he can make 125 pounds first. He got hurt in the lead up to this fight, did not get that opportunity. Certainly, it would not be ridiculous for the UFC to run that fight back next, but I think Brandon Moreno did a big eye-opening performance on this night to show you 4-0-1 in his last five. He's very deserving. Absolutely. Moreno definitely showed that he definitely not, he needs to have his name in the hat. And I mean, listen, he looked impressive. But more importantly, he kind of had a little swagger to himself, too. He got a little poise, you know, watching this guy fight from when he first came into the UFC and watching him now. You're looking at a different fighter. You're looking at a fighter who truly believes in himself and really has an understanding of his skill set. And it takes a fighter sometimes a while to get an understanding of the skill set so they can get it in the mastery level. But now we're seeing that when Moreno he had a great fight against Roy Val, and I think he should definitely be number one contender. Always a bonus when you got a finisher in the flyweight division. We got to talk about the co-main here for the women's flyweight title. Valentina Shevchenko successfully defends her title for the fourth time. It was not the tidal wave that some expected, gentlemen. Uh, I think the main event was expected to be a bit more of a battle, and the co-main was going to be the coronation. It sort of flip-flopped here, but Shevchenko, down the stretch, proved her dominance in those championship rounds. Uh, Rashad, when you look at what Shevchenko was able to do, what's out in front of her right now? Because uh, tonight was another example that she didn't really have a whole lot to gain and had everything in the world to lose, and she does get the job done, but she was tested tonight. She was tested tonight, and that's what I like most about tonight's fight. You know, we don't normally get to see her tested, and the way that she was tested in the areas that she was tested shows her overall growth. But at the same time, we do get to see a human side to Shevchenko, and other opponents can now say, hmm, maybe I can do that. One thing that her opponent was able to do, Jennifer Maya, was able to be very physical with, with, with um, Shevchenko early out in the onset of this fight, get her into some position, kind of gum up the action a little bit. And you seen it was kind of working for a little bit, but then you just seen a gear just switch and Shevchenko just became into another zone, becoming very sharp with her striking and just very sharp with just her, uh, where she's putting her attention as far as her activity. And she pulled away from the uh, from Maya in this fight, but it was very close. And, and honestly speaking, you know, she did show a few more holes than she normally shows. So I think that should give some girls in the weight class a lot of hope. It could be on the surface, right? But at the end of the day, though, a minus 2,000 favorite lost one round. And it felt in the moment when she did when Jennifer Maya controlled her on the ground in round two. Was there an upset brewing? The reality is there wasn't because Shevchenko is so far ahead of the competition at 125 pounds that she's just so well-rounded, so game, so studied, and so poised that even coming off MCL surgery, it just wasn't an issue. In the end, it was a pretty wide decision and another dominant performance for Shevchenko. It's just the fact that when she comes out as such a ridiculously large betting favorite, you assume an early stoppage or it's a disappointment. You give Maya credit for hanging around and being durable, but look, at 32, Shevchenko's on top of her game. 
I just don't see her ever losing this title. And I know that's ridiculous. I know upsets happen. I know former strawweight queen Jessica Andrade, who might be the next contender, was always going to have a puncher's chance. But you have to tip your cap to Shevchenko. Moving down recently when they opened up this new division from Bantamweight, where she already had great success, really pushed Amanda Nunes to the limit twice. She's putting together a resume and a, and a peak performance level that screams all time to me. As long as Valentina Shevchenko wants to hang around in this sport, I think she's going to be remembered as one of the greats. And this was a night where maybe things got a little hairy for one round, but the champ figured things out. The dominance continues for Valentina Shevchenko. My favorite fight always the next one and we got a good one coming here in 256 never too early to look forward here gentlemen uh tony ferguson charles Oliveira, are going to be the headliner the main event at ufc 256 as we lead up to this one it's going to be exciting you talk about the superstar fighters and those hollywood type names tony ferguson has become one of those bc uh, as we look forward to 256 what will be the marquee of the talk between these two Oh, this is going to be a hellacious fight as all the top fights at 155 pounds in this era have been for UFC lightweights. But for Tony Ferguson, look, he finally got his title opportunity, albeit for an interim one earlier this year against Justin Gaethje, took the fight on short notice, didn't get the win. But I think this is his potential redemption opportunity. Let's not forget Ferguson, despite that huge winning streak, that was stopped by Gaethje. He's advanced in his career. He's in his late 30s. But if he can still bring back the peak form, it's not out of the question given Habib Nurmagomedov's probable retirement, although Dana White says otherwise, that this a win here could lift Tony Ferguson to a title shot. We know Conor McGregor is going to fight Dustin Poirier in a rematch in January. At this point, Dana White says there will not be an interim or a full title added to that. But if Tony Ferguson, who will fight before then, can get a big win, it's not out of the question that he goes right back to the title. But good God, he's be facing Doe Bronx, Charles Oliveira. This guy's red hot. This division is all killer, no filler. Buck, give me a seatbelt. I can't wait for this fight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for it either, BC. You know, one thing when I think about this matchup, I think about this is going to be the challenge of both of the two. Uh, these, both of these guys are some of the best transitional fighters in MMA and especially in their weight class, meaning the fact that they go from one technique to the next technique so seamlessly, it's really hard to tell what technique they're doing. I mean, they both got very funky style. Charles Oliveira has the ability to catch a submission from anywhere. You know, he's on a seven fight win streak. Five of those wins are by submission and two by knockout. So he has a little power too as well with just the ability to find a submission, but he's going against a great Tony Ferguson. I mean, he brings his B-boy style and he just has a mean nastiness to him. You know. He just got a little chip on his shoulder, and his elbows are some of the nasty in the nastiness in the game. So this matchup is one that gets me excited, and it's one that gets me excited to, as a Tony Ferguson fan. He's one who lost after going on a 12-fight lose a win streak against Justin Gaethje, and he's been chomping at the bit to get back into the octagon. He almost fought Dustin Poirier. That did not happen, but now he's excited for this fight with Charlie, Charlie Oliveira, and I can't wait either. We are excited for 256, but until then, BC shot it. It's always a pleasure having you here on CBS Sports HQ. Go ice down and get ready for the next one. For more, you can always download and subscribe Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. You can also join the conversation Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, live on YouTube. It's Morning Combat. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.